Welcome to the Sent from Disneyland podcast. Here age relives fond memories of the past. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. On this podcast, we'll take a journey into the past and explore Disneyland and Disneyland history with mementos, snapshots, and postcards sent from Disneyland from 1955 to the present. The postcards from this episode will be viewable on Instagram at Sent from Disneyland or on my website, sentfromdisneyland.com. Today I'm starting off by thanking my patrons from patreon.com. You can join in and receive mail from my desk or for my trips to Disneyland. I'm currently working on some new patron benefits. Patrons can sign up for as little as a dollar per month. Special thanks to Random Olive, the first patron to this podcast, and to the e-ticket patrons to Nia, Eric Daniels, Monica Seats Vega, Joe Gamble, Scott Booker, Russ Romano, Michael and Christina Cross, Mary Henderson, and Sheila Harry. See ticket patrons, series inquiries only, Debbie Weinstein, Jennifer Schneep, Ruby McDowell, Grace Coat, Scott Cagle, Ben and Noel Bruning, and Patty Wool. B ticket patron, the Disney Rewind Podcast, and to the A ticket patrons, Elise Sharp, Zealot Infinity, Alexis Robles, Maggie and Henry Byers, Angelica Nablock, and the All Aboard Podcast. I am your host, your post host, Clocky, and today we have two postcards sent from Disneyland. The front of our first postcard has Town Square on Main Street, USA. You can see some of the Main Street vehicles, City Hall, the Emporium, and in the middle you can see the Town Square flagpole. On the back it reads, Town Square, Main Street. Main Street Town Square represents the typical small American town in the early 1900s, where the gas lamp is gradually being replaced by electricity, the plodding horse-drawn streetcars giving way to the chugging horseless carriage. It's postmarked October 11th, 1974, with a U.S. Postal Service cancel and a 10-cent Jefferson Memorial postage stamp, Scott number 1510. I assume they visit the park on Thursday, October 10th, when park hours were from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The weather was a high of 74 and a low of 53. It's addressed to Home Partner Sweepstakes in San Francisco, California. It reads, October 10th, 1974. Hi, I really enjoy your show. I hope it will stay on Channel 5 for a long time. Miss Tessa Menzies. One question I received from a Patreon patron was about Disneyland's use of the U.S. flag. The flagpole in the center of Town Square was there on opening day. A fun fact about the base of the flagpole, it was found at an accident in Los Angeles. Legend has it the ornate base was originally a base for a street lamp, but was in disrepair and could not be salvaged. So the Disney company purchased it for $5.00 and attached a 65-foot flagpole to the base and added it to Main Street. In the original plans for the park, a gazebo was placed in the center of Town Square. If you look at some of the original concept art drawings of the park, you can see a gazebo or a small fountain in front of the flagpole. A gazebo was even built. As I mentioned in episode 82, sent from Magnolia Park, Walt felt it distracted from Sleeping Beauty Castle and had the gazebo moved to the other end of Main Street, near where the Princess Fantasy Fair is today. The flagpole remains in the center of Town Square, and is raised and lowered based on proper flag etiquette, the flag being raised between sunrise and the opening of the park, and lowered around sunset. Although the flag would be lowered and removed every day, the first instance I see of the flag retreat ceremony in my daily guides and maps doesn't appear until 1993. I did a quick internet search and a virtual tour around the other parks, and found that Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom are the only two parks with a flagpole in Town Square. Hong Kong and Paris have small gazebos, going against Walt's original plan to see the castle from the train station to the end of Main Street, and Shanghai and Tokyo have nothing in the center of their Town Square. You must be quick on the Sunday sales on Enfield Post. I tried to get a few sheets but did not claim them fast enough. Missed out on a space discovery sheet that had a great Tomorrowland look, but I did get a sheet of Legends of the West and a sheet of Carousel Horses. Look for those on Frontierland and King Arthur Carousel postcards soon. You can head over to EnfieldPost.com and explore all the different vintage stamps you can use on your next card or letter. That's E-N-F-I-E-L-D. P-O-S-T on Instagram and EnfieldPost.com for your wedding and vintage postage needs. Enfield Post is the official postage stamp sponsor of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. The front of our next postcard has the Mark Twain pulling past the Golden Horseshoe. In the background, you can see the small town of Rainbow Ridge and the dock of the Mark Twain. On the right, you can see the gazebo that used to sit on the rivers of America. On the back it reads, Mark Twain, 
Goodbyes have been said, and the Mark Twain pulls away from the little frontierland town in Disneyland to take passengers on a nostalgic ride down the rivers of America. Color photo by Fritz Musser. It's postmarked August 10, 1957, with an Anaheim Centennial 1857-1957 cancel and a three-cent Purple Liberty postage stamp, Scott number 1053. I assume they visit the park on Friday, August 9th, when park hours were from 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. The weather was a high of 81 and a low of 61. Park attendance that day was 27,038. It's addressed to a Mr. and Mrs. Boderud of Fargo, North Dakota. It reads, Dear Mother and Daddy, We are having a ball, taking lots of pictures with my new camera. Fabulous place. Love, Phyllis. The big flag question is how many official U.S. flags does Disneyland fly? The likely number is one. Just the town square flag. All the other flags may be off by not having the correct number of stars, maybe having 48 stars like the flag had when Disneyland opened. Some claim that the flags that look like the U.S. flag may have an extra or missing stripe from the standard 13. By having these non-official flags, Disneyland is not required to take care of or use the proper etiquette to raise and lower or even dispose of the flags. There are some historic flags flown around New Orleans Square and some specific flags flown near the Mark Twain loading dock shown on the front of this postcard. According to the Disneyland website, the flags flown in Frontierland include the John Cabot flag, the first flag flown over mainland America, flown in the early 1600s. It's a simple white flag with two red stripes, one running vertically down the center and another running horizontally across the center. The King's Color flag, the banner under which the English colonization of America was affected, what we know today as the Union flag. The Continental flag, this was a flag carried by American troops at the Battle of Bunker Hill and is red with a white square in the upper left-hand corner with a tree centered in the square. The pine tree flag, the first flag carried by the then-infant American Navy, which consisted of only one fleet of six ships. That flag is a white flag with a tree in the center, with the phrase, Appeal to Heaven, written above the tree. The Grand Union flag, this flag marks the beginning of our national existence and was raised at Cambridge by General Washington in 1776. It's the standard 13-stripe flag, but instead of the blue rectangle with 50 stars, there is the United Kingdom flag represented. The Betsy Ross flag, 13 stars, 13 stripes, the first American flag formally adopted by the Continental Congress in 1776. The stars represent the new constellation of states rising in the West. The stripes represent the number of United Colonies. The Star-Spangled Banner, 15 stars, 15 stripes. This flag inspired Francis Scott Key to write the words of our national anthem during the British attack on Fort McHenry in 1814. Old Glory, 14 stars, 13 stripes. In 1831, a sea captain named William Driver, in command of the brig Charles Doggett, was preparing to sail from Salem, Massachusetts. The flag was hoisted and then unfurled. Captain Driver was moved to call it Old Glory. One piece of flag etiquette that I learned while researching this episode was the flag rules on Memorial Day. The flag starts at half-mast and rises to full-mast at noon. Next time I'm at the park on Memorial Day, I'll be curious to see that happen. This incoming postcard is sponsored by the Art Throwdown. Art Throwdown, or ATD, is an online craft hour on Instagram, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. Be sure to check out Monday's ATD, which is usually hosted by a paper artist, Russ Romano. I see many amazing art projects, learn about awesome postmarks, postage stamp history, and a lot more on different episodes. It's great to stop in for an hour to watch someone craft or design something unique. Each host brings something a little different to each show. I'll list some of the regular hosts, or you can follow Russ Romano 2021 on Instagram. The front of my incoming postcard has stylized images of the Tiki Room. At the top, there are the four MCs, Jose, Michael, Pierre, and Fritz, and in the center is a dull whip and a tiki room cup. On the back it reads, Original Artwork, Stolen My Thunder, by Artist McBiff. It's postmarked August 3rd, 2022, with an Anaheim cancel and a Star Wars droid D.O. postage stamp, Scott number 5576. I assume they visit the park on Sunday, July 31st, when park hours were from 8 a.m. to midnight. The weather was a high of 89 and a low of 67. It reads, Clocky. The weekly podcast has inspired me to write my favorite post host. The weather was real muggy this trip, but it was great to see the nighttime entertainment back at the parks. Just finished the chef's counter at the Napa Rose, 
and watching the Disneyland Forever fireworks. Thanks for the weekly entertainment, Doug. 7 31 22. High of 88. Humidity 72. Ugh. Thank you so much for the postcard, Doug. I really love the McBiff artwork. It reminds me a lot of Rolly Crump. The Wonderground Gallery has some amazing postcards available. Whenever I need something specific or a specific character, I always stop by Wonderground in downtown Disney to find it. I hope you had a good time at the chef's table. It's on my list of things to do for upcoming trips. Thanks for listening to Sent from Disneyland. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and tell your friends. It would be awesome to share your favorite episode. There are over 100 episodes to choose from. It would also help to leave a five-star rating and comment on whatever podcast platform you use. If you'd like to support the show financially, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash sentfromdisneyland. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at sentfromdisneyland or on Twitter at sentfromdisney. For questions and comments, send me a postcard addressed to sent from Disneyland, P.O. Box 44, Hood, California, 95639. This podcast is not affiliated with Disney, the United States Postal Service, or any post office or Disney properties. Opinions expressed on this podcast belong to its host and guest of the Sent from Disneyland podcast. 